Okay, we now we look ahead to the weekend's action and your attention, wherever you are in the world, surely is drawn to the fantastic bill in Sheffield, um, which is headlined by Kel Brook, uh, who's been coming along for years and years and now he's on the brink of a world title shot. He's got an eliminator against Oklahoma City's Carson Jones, who hasn't had things his, all his own way as he's come up through the ranks. Eight defeats already. Um, Tris, is he a threat? What do you make of Carson Jones? I don't think he's a threat necessarily. That's not to say he's, he's, he's a bad fighter. He's not. But I think there's something special about Brooke. I've, I've always felt that. He's one of the guys who, I said before, has looked, looked out of place on undercards. There's sort of an X factor about Brooke. You know, he seems to tick just about every box in the sense that he's, he's, tough, to, he's tough to hit. He's always in, he's, now he's always in good shape. Big puncher, spiteful puncher. Um, sharp, good technique, um, very well rounded and there's something a bit, a bit different about the way he fights and his, and his attitude and I think he's matured and I think that maturity is, is arguably what's going to take him on to the next level. Um, I don't think Carson Jones is a massive threat but like I said that's no disrespect to Jones, I just think Brooks on a, on a slightly different level to, to Carson Jones. I mean, have you, have you seen much of Carson Jones? I mean, he's, he, he lost his early fights, he claims he was mismanaged early on Dan and but he, he seems to have really learned from those from those early early setbacks, and he's so determined. If you hear him speak now, isn't he? Yeah. Well, sometimes that can be the best way to, to go through a career. I mean, that's not not intentional. But you actually learn more by losing fights early on if you can put right the mistakes that you made. If you can analyse your performances, and clearly that's what Jones has done because he's definitely been on a good run over the last couple of years. Having said that, I think Brooks one of those fighters who rises to the occasion. If there's a big fight for him, and if, if Jones is a threat, I think Brook will dig inside himself and find something extra to come out on top, but we'll see on the night. I mean, you've been, you was at his fight against Hatton, wasn't you? You've been at a lot of his fights over the years. Have, have, you, have you seen that improvement and, and, and that special star quality that Tris was just talking about? Yeah, uh, the best fight I've seen him have was against the pole, Yatskevich, about a year or so ago. It's, he was a tough guy, never been stopped before, and Brook just took him apart. And I think he won in six rounds, but frankly, he could have won it even earlier yeah. if he'd really tried. But... That's why Brook is such a classy fighter. He can win in the first round or the last round, and he has several gears to go through. And even then, he looks as though he has even more to come, even when he wins impressively. So, yeah, he is a very special fighter, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we talk about this, this whole bill in more detail in the magazine this week, which is uh, available in the new, on the newsstand on Thursdays, as usual. You can get it um, a day earlier, uh, boxingnewsonline.net forward slash apps, um, and that will be available on Wednesday. Okay, so that it's a massive, massive undercard, though, isn't it, in Sheffield? Tris, what's your what are you looking forward to most on there? I'm quite looking forward to seeing the test that Ryan Aston's got against Nottingham Puncher Curtis Valentine. But um, I think the one that stands out is the rematch between Gavin Reese and Derry Matthews. Uh, it, Reese, I've always rated. I've always enjoyed watching him fight. You know, very busy, good style, enjoyable to watch. Um, and it, you know, he's been in some really good action fights. Was there the night he won the light world title against Suleiman and Bai, and, and the, the night he lost it against Andreas Kotelnik too. Um, Derry Matthews, I thought I thought he was done. I thought yeah. he was finished a year yeah. ago. Yeah. You know, I, I thought he was on the scrap heap, and, and he somehow dusted himself off after a couple of losses, and and returned with a magnificent win against Anthony Crawler, who was arguably the most informed British yeah. fighter, you know, at, at, at the time. So to turn the form book on its head. Um, like that was astonishing. It's, it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it going against Reese, who's got slightly more experience than Crawler had. Um, and obviously they had the first match, which ended with the bad head, uh, head clash and, and Derry home and bad, bad damage to his nose. If any, if if we can, if they can avoid that happening again, and there's still question marks about Derry's nose, I believe. But if they can avoid that happening again, then it could be a terrific fight. Yeah, I mean, I was there. I was ringside for that fight. It really was building up nicely. Um, it looked, it looked perhaps as if Reese was just starting to come on at the point of the stoppage, but there's no way I say not enough time had elapsed for him to be in the in the driving seat. Um, so yeah, fascinated by that one. There's another rematch there, Dan, and their first fight was an unexpected classic um, and another incredibly unexpected winner in Kerry Hope. Do you think he can he can do it again against Proxy? Yeah, well, I saw that one the first fight in March, I think, and it was a really grueling fight and. Uh, even when it got to the final bell, nobody was quite sure whether Hope had done enough or whether Prox had done enough to retain. In the end, Hope got it, which I mean, is a great story. But also, it's great to see you know, a total outsider, underdog challenger coming in and coming in in great shape. He'd really trained hard. 
he pulled off a really spectacular win and against a guy who was unbeaten and reckoned to be going towards world titles. And I think that could be a really interesting rematch and can hope you know, maintain that sort of focus and intensity or did Proxa take it lightly first time? It's just say, oh, maybe he's just not as good a fighter as we thought he was. Maybe hope just exposed him, really. Yeah, I mean, with, with the, all, the, all the staff will be making their predictions for the uh, big fights in Sheffield, and you'll be able to get those online at www.boxingnewsonline.net. Um, also at the weekend is a little guy called Tyson Fury. He fights, and he makes um, his latest appearance. He takes on an American called Vinny Madaloni. Um, some of you more hardcore fans may be aware of Madaloni. He's, he's been beaten by Vander Holyfield, Adamek, uh, Mormek, uh, Boitsov. He's, he's, he's fought some of the top guys, never come close to beating those top guys. He's been in entertaining fights, but he's taken a lot of punishment. Tris, is he, is he a threat to Tyson Fury? Um, no. <laughs> no, he's not, frankly. Um, he's, he's, a small, uh, he's a small veteran who was never world class. Uh, always entertaining to fight, you know, he does have a cult following, I yeah. think, on the East Coast. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's, he shouldn't be anywhere near Tyson Fury, and probably on the night he won't be anywhere near him. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a, I think it's a mismatch. Um, you know, Fury, you know, you can say it's a marking time fight all you want, but, you know, the last two or three guys that Fury's fought, they haven't really got him anywhere in the rankings since he fought Derek Chisora. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not a great match on, on paper, and I don't think it will be on the night. I think Fury should just pick him apart and grind him down, but I don't think it, it will take necessarily that long. Madaloni does tend to bust up and get facial damage. In fact, I remember him, I was ringside, I think it was in 2002, when he fought the Vladimir Klitschko Ray Mercer undercard. He fought Al Cole, oh, a veteran, yeah. in a six rounder. And Al Cole, you know, everyone was saying, you know, I think Madaloni was 15 and 0 at the time, and everyone was saying Al Cole was being brought in just to make Madaloni look good. Cole thoroughly outboxed him, cut him up, busted him up, and did a real number on him, and it was quite gruesome to watch that night. And Madaloni got really, really badly broken down. And in many ways, it's been all downhill since for Matt, for, for Madaloni, and that was 10 years ago. It's true. I mean, it seems like Hennessy of Hennessy Sports have got their own plan for Fury. He's no longer the British champion. Um, which which took away the the obvious matchup that we'd all like to see against David Price. I mean, taking David Price out of the equation, and perhaps bearing in mind that Hennessy seems to be want to bring in him in experience from 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 abroad. Who who would be a good test for Tyson Fury at this stage, Dan? Well, somebody better than Vinnie Matt alone, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's clear enough. Well, you think with the, with, the, with, with the Klitschko's, you'd think of maybe someone along the size of in, along their size, with their dimensions or something, yeah. wouldn't you? You know, for a start, that might be a good starting yeah. point. But the thing about Fury is they're matching him very, very carefully. He's had a couple of scares. He got floored and has been hit by right hands and wobbled and buckled by fighters who are not particularly special, nowhere near world class. They're just being very, very cautious with the matchmaking now. They're just fighting smaller guys, older guys, guys who have been in wars and have been bashed up and been worn down and have uh, I mean, more than coming for a payday. I mean, Madaloni is the sort of guy who will try hard, but he just hasn't got the skills to to test Fury, really. He's just nowhere near world class. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Vinnie Madaloni last night and he said his, his favourite punch is the overhand right, so you just never know. But the full, the full interview will be in this week's issue. Uh, also, some more heavyweight action. We've got Vit uh, sorry, Vladimir Klitschko, Tony Thompson 2. It's not exactly Ali Frazier 2, is it? Why, why have we got this fight, Tris? It's just because Thompson's the IBF mandatory. There's no call for it. There's no public demand for it. Uh, it's just the IBF, you know, um, Thompson won a, an eliminator against Mo Harris at the end of last year and that put him in the, in the spot for, the, for, the, for, for a rematch with Klitschko. So the IBF want to see it and, uh, yeah. because the IBF want to see it and, and also because there's no one else out there yeah. that's going ahead. You know, you talk about Tyson Fury and the different contenders having marking time fights. Well, that's what the Klitschkos are doing until the likes of Fury, David Price, Deontay Wilder, uh, and Seth Mitchell have, have all matured. All the Klitschko's are going to be doing is taking marking time fights, really. How, how does this affect the, the legacy of the Klitschko's? I mean, I think Vladimir is, is, he's had 20 world title fights and he's won 18 of them. It's hard to argue with those statistics and you can't really find a name that he hasn't fought, can you? Well, it's a bit like Joe Lewis back in the 30s and 40s. People said he had the bum of the month club and he did fight some fairly ordinary challenges, but at the same time he fought everybody who was good. But he just fought so frequently, you know, five, six, seven times a year, that he fought everybody, and he fought the good fighters and some of the bad fighters as well. And the Klitschko's are doing a pretty similar thing. I mean, Tony Thompson's a nothing special challenger, but 
the Klitschko's have fought all the good guys as well, so this is a nothing special fight. The thing is, this is going ahead in a football stadium in Switzerland. It may sell 30,000, 40,000 tickets, so if you can sell 30,000 tickets for, to fight a nobody, then you'll go ahead and do it, won't you? No good money doing it. So. To be fair to Thompson as well, he's not that bad. He is the best of the yeah. best of a bad bunch. He's right up there with the leading contenders. You know, he's awkward, he's strong, physical, um, and he came into boxing late. So although he is although he is old, he's, he hasn't got great mileage. But you know, so so in his defence, he's he's better than, than some people might give him credit for. But you know, he's still not on the Klitschko's level, I don't think. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the second part of BNTV. Uh, remember, you can debate some of these issues that we've been talking about here um, at forum.boxingnewsonline.net, and that's the new Boxing News Forum, so please do get involved with that, and uh, hopefully you'll get to argue with some of the members of staff as well.